in our last video, we went through the process of how to analyze a brief. In the process of analyzing the brief, we created for ourselves a spider diagram, which allowed us to elaborate on some of the key words we, we pulled out from the brief. From that spider diagram, we were able to identify several areas that we could use as a basis to form our research. Just before we get into that, I'd like to talk a little bit first about different types of research. There are two main types of research. There's primary research and secondary research. Primary research involves gathering data that has not previously been collected by anyone else before. For example, if you conduct a survey or an interview, that would be an example of primary research. Keeping with the meringue as our theme, for example, if you went into Tesco and bought a selection of different types of meringue straight off the shelf, took them home and analyzed them, checked them for taste, for color, for texture, in order to build up a full picture for yourself exactly what an ideal meringue should look like, that would be the perfect example of primary research. Secondary research can be divided into four main sections. There are many different types of textbooks available from which we can gather information. What's particularly important when using textbook information is to not just copy information directly out of the textbook itself. A better way to go, and I'll give a demonstration of it later on, would be to read through the information and then from your understanding, put what you found in a summarized version in your own words. It's very important that we don't copy information down blindly without fully reading and understanding it. If we copy it down blindly, we're not certain if it fits exactly what we're after and it reduces the amount of marks you can get if the teacher sees that you just copied information straight out of a book. And always, always, always leave a link or a reference to where you got the information from. Very similar to textbooks, we have websites. Again, these are secondary source of information. Try and be selective with the websites you go for. Try and make sure they're reputable websites, big websites, or academic journals, if you will. In the same way, Try not just copy and paste information down from off a website. Just like with the book, read through, be selective. Typically speaking, when you search something on Google, a Google summary will come up at the very top of the page. But make sure you don't just focus on the few lines of a Google summary. Make sure you find the website where the information is from to make sure you get the information in context. Again, read through it and put it in your own words based on what you understand. Your understanding is very important because it's your understanding that's on display here and it's your understanding that will really get the marks, the top marks that you're hoping for. Also, when using websites, make sure you compare the information from one website with another to verify the information that you found. And always, just like with the books, make sure you leave a, a website reference to where your information came from. The next source is multimedia. Now multimedia can cover anything from graphics to videos to animations, all of which, typically speaking, you probably find online. Films, graphics, animations uh, can all be used to help gain understanding on a particular ingredient or a particular function. Just like with the other sources, make sure you state who produced the information or where you found it. The final section of secondary information of secondary research would be prior knowledge. By this stage in your GCSE, you would have already covered quite a significant amount in the first year. So if there's anything that you've covered previously in your lessons or in your textbooks that pertains to what you're doing that you just know by now, then you could put something down and then you can put that can go under the category of prior knowledge. So for example, if you've already done in year 10, um, a whole section on eggs and denaturation and meringues and you understand some things from that, you can cite that prior knowledge as a legitimate source of research. So when it comes to research, I'm going to divide it up into a couple of little steps. So first of all, this is a book. This is our main book that we use in food preparation and nutrition by Anita Toll. There are other books available, but I found this one to be pretty good. So because this topic is looking at meringues, I thought I'd first of all go to the textbook to see if there's anything in the textbook that relates specifically to foams and meringues because that's what's being requested for in the task itself. Now remember, when reading through information, you can't just copy everything that you read. Even if you leave a reference point, that's gonna significantly reduce uh, the amount of marks you get. 
Ideally, and this is the better way to go, is to be selective with the information. So what I want to do here is first of all, read through the information on meringues. There is no substitute for reading. Oftentimes what you find is that students who are lazy will just copy and paste blindly a whole section without necessarily even reading it, put it in, and then when the teacher or the ultimate examiner reads it, they realize that sections don't fully make sense because they've not taken the time to be discriminative and selective and edit the information that they want or need specifically for their requirements. So what I do, I'd read through first of all, read through a paragraph at a time, look at the pictures, yeah, see what's going on in the pictures, try and understand there. Then once I've read through, I'll go back now to the first paragraph and I'll start, start to make some notes. So the first paragraph, I've made some notes. Egg whites are a protein in liquid form. When whisks, they uh, the action of whisking traps air, okay, uh, and they can expand up to seven times their original size. That covers these fir first three paragraphs in just a few lines. The information that I've put down, this is now my information that I've got from someone else's research, from someone else's information. I've not copied it, I've read it through, and in essence put it in my own words, summarized it, and put down my understanding of what I'm reading. That's very important. What you could do is you could either draw out a graphic, maybe simplify it in your own way if you want to make it easier, or you could probably scan these graphics in. Again, uh, I think that would be acceptable. Make sure you put a reference as to where the, the graphics came from, or you can find some equivalent graphics online and use them as well. The same process exactly applies if you're getting the information from off a website. You can't just copy and paste. You could, but it's going to significantly limit your marks. Better to read through the information and then, just like I've done here, make notes. The making of the notes is an important process in your brain. Making notes, to make notes you have to read through, your brain has to understand in order to put it in your own words. Whereas when you're copying, you don't really even have to understand. So it's important that you read through, have a think, and then write down what you understand from what you've read, and only those parts that are relevant the actual brief. In the next video in the series we will cover how to conduct an NEA1 investigation.